And with that news, I would like to say, have fun on the craps table. Hold up. I'm getting something in my ear here. We got some breaking news. We're going to hand it over to Christian, and hopefully he can uh, let us know what the breaking news is. Thanks a lot, Tom. We got some breaking news down here in the PokerStars VR world. Sublime has actually won his first ever MTT. This is humongous news for the community, and we just had to cut the broadcast, and we had to let you guys know. We're going to run the highlights because this was a crazy event, and let's get right into it. Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Jesse, also known as Sublime, and oh my god, am I ever excited to bring you guys this video. You guys would never know how many MTTs I've actually participated in, and I've come so close to winning, coming in fourth, third, second, but I've never been able to reach that trophy level. But that changes today. Guys, we have finally won an MTT, and to start things out on the small blind, we get a king, queen, we start off so strong, and, you know, with this kind of hand, you need to make a statement on the table, and that's exactly what I did here, it comes around, everybody's folding, people are calling their thousand dollar blinds, I immediately raise it up to three thousand, show how bullish I am, and immediately... We get everybody to, uh, or no, we get we get Stretch Mango to call it, and then I think Dallas BB folds it. Yeah, he does fold it. Flop comes out nine nine four. I still think I have the strongest hand here. I throw out a bet. Being bullish, I want to be able to control the table right from the get go. I think we came into this uh, multi table tournament final table in fourth place in chips. Um, so I wanted to start off being bullish and show people on the table that I'm nothing to fuck around with. The next set of cards we get here later on in the tournament is a five king suited of hearts. Immediately we call our blinds and I'm checking up. You see, look there. I am fourth place on the leaderboard still. And we want to improve that. Definitely. We want to improve that. We want to be chip leader because when you're chip leader, you can do a lot of damage to people's bankroll, especially with these high of blinds. But nonetheless, the flop comes out eight, ace, nine, two hearts are on the board. We got two hearts in our hand with the second highest flush draw. Somebody bets, uh, Spencer family bets 3000. I call it. I don't see a need to re-raise it because if another heart doesn't come out, I don't want to lose more chips and I want to keep as many people in the pot as I can. Another heart comes out and I check it and a seven of hearts comes out. We basically got the nut flush draw here. And I throw out a bet for 4000 just trying to get a little bit more value in this pot. But uh, with with my luck, nobody else calls. Uh, we get two folders on the table. So we end up taking that pot home. The next set of cards we get here are coming up in just a second. We end up getting an ace 10. And as you guys can see, I'm checking the leaderboards again. I'm now in second place on the table for chips. Now, I didn't cut all the winning hands because, quite frankly, this multi table tournament was, uh, this final table was boring. And you guys will kind of see that when the last final two play out. But it was pretty boring. But we get an ace 10 here. We throw out a bet for 4,700. And everybody just folds. We don't get to have fun with it. Oh, wait, no. Everybody folds. 4C White ends up calling it, and the flop comes out 7 King 6. I bet 4,000. 4C White is having a hard time looking at his cards. But uh, he picks up his chips, but he double thinks himself, and he ends up just folding the cards, and we get to take home that pot as well. We then get a 9 King here on the big blind. Um, two people have already been eliminated at this point. Like I said, I wasn't seeing much action. I was playing a very, um, tight, but, um, strong game at the same time to show like when I'm betting you guys want to fold kind of thing. And I carried that perception all the way till the end of the table. He goes in with a queen two. We have a nine king. Luckily, no queens or twos come out on the table and we take that pot home with high card. And, uh, 
And we're now down to the final four. Nay got eliminated there. We have a 9-4 here on this. Um, everybody folds and we just get to take the pot home. We then get a 10-6 here on a small blind. And this is when I wanted to prove my dominance again and show that I can bluff. I can be bullish. I needed, uh, I wanted some extra chips in my stack. So we throw out a bet for 3,000 here. We have absolutely nothing. We're drawing dead on everything. There's an ace on the board. There's two spades. There's two uh, clubs. Like I said, I wanted to be bullish. I wanted to show that I can sit here and I can play poker. And going up against a large chip stack like this, 3,500, basically nothing to him. But like I said, I was, I was giving off this impression that I was a bullish player and that when I bet, I bet big. And usually it means that I'm up ahead and I'm winning. Um, a king comes out on the flop. So if he's betting for any kind of flush, that automatically gets negated. And that's generally what I thought he was doing. He was betting for the flush because he wasn't re-raising me with a uh, ace in his hand or nothing like that. So he ends up folding and I didn't get to see his cards, but I want to say my prediction was correct that he was going for a flush draw. We then get pocket tens, and it's now sixteen hundred to to be in the hand. I end up raising it to four hundred, but everybody folds, and I don't get any action with that hand. I look, and I'm still in second place. I'm like, oh my god. We're now not too far out of first place for the chip stack. We get a king two here on a small blind, and the flop comes out ten king six. He ends up throwing out a bet for 3,000. I immediately call it. We got top pair on the board. Yes, we do have a low kicker, but um, spin and goes are my specialty, guys. And this is what I practice spin and goes to do is to be in these kinds of situations. Um, we do end up taking that pot home with a pair of kings. I'm thinking he may be at a 10. Uh, but then we get jack 10 here on the button. Um, we lost a couple chips in some other hands, but that's okay. We don't get any callers though, sadly, and I had to just chuck my cards away like that. I don't, I don't tend to like to do that. Luckily, guys, um, 4C Whites ends up coming back to the table, and we get to have a. I think this is. Maybe I included a wrong clip or something. Oh wait, no, I did not. I remember this hand exactly. Okay, so eight seven eight comes out on the river. I end up throwing out a bet for six thousand because I do have a straight draw on the board, and it's good. It's good pot value six thousand on a sixteen hundred dollar or on a two thousand dollar buy, and I'm basically three times in the big blind. I got the chips for it. Lo and behold, a six comes out on the turn, and we end up having a straight. I push all in. I'm trying to get somebody else to call. And I'm really hoping Stretchy Mango would here. He takes a while to look at his cards. And he's thinking and he's thinking and I'm hoping that he would call. I'm hoping he had like an 8 or he had like a 7. And he would call and I told him he had a good fold. Really good fold. I had a you know, straight on the turn. We then get an ace 3 here. Mango ends up busting out, um, and we're down to the final three. So at this point, we're guaranteed sixteen and a half million. And honestly, I was gonna be fine with that. I've been running low on my chip stack. I only had about twenty million entering this tournament, uh, so I was fine with fifteen and a half million. That's basically my whole chip stack. He goes all in, and you guys know my philosophy: aces are king. I have an ace three in my hand, very low ace. But when it comes down to a final three like this, the odds of other people having an ace in their hand are fairly low. And yeah, it might not be correct poker strategy, but nonetheless, you guys are going to see what happens here. And it works out for us. The fleas here, it takes a while to make his call, but he ends up doing it anyways. And the flop, com or the flop comes out, ace, king, five, uh, then a 10, then a nine. We both just end up checking it. And guys, we take that pot home with an ace, three. This is why I say aces are king. We now have 164,600. We have about a 4 to 1 chip stack on them. And I want to preface this right now, guys. We are playing very, 
very tight. I, at least I am playing very, very tight. And here's why. And I'll give you guys my explanation right now. In a tournament like this, you want to make sure that you have the best cards possible to call somebody on, um, to call a short stack like this because you do not want to risk them doubling up. It makes it a lot harder to actually win if you double them up and having a four to one chip stack like I do right now on the table is a position I want to stay in. So I'm not worried about giving him antis. I'm not worried about giving him blinds. I am just worried about when he goes all in or when I force him to go all in, I want to make sure that I have the best hand possible and well, not possible, but the best hand that could possibly be in our two hands. We get a uh, king eight here on a small blind. I re-raise it up to 5,200 and this was kind of the theme for a little bit. I was re-raising him. I was, uh, our, what am I trying to say? <laughs> The flop comes out 9-10 jack. He actually didn't fold. I thought he did. I re-raised him into there. We had a double straight draw going both ways. A queen pops out. We have a straight. A seven pops out. We have a straight. Uh, we then get a king 10 here on a big blind. And I was really wishing he would have uh, went all in here. But uh, I re-raised him up 20,000. Actually, 40,000. And I plop all those chips on the table trying to get him to go all in. He doesn't call. He folds. And we end up taking the... Uh, all those antis and blinds back to the bank. We then get a 9-10. I call it. He ends up going all in. I don't want to call with a 9-10. I don't want to double him up. That's just not something I want to do. Like I said, he ends up getting some of his blinds back. And we're back to the next hand here. We get a jack too. Uh, he ends up just folding it. It wasn't good enough for him. And I was going to fold it regardless, even if he did anything. So... That was good on me. We get a 4-7 here suited. Don't want to call it. Like I said, I want to make sure I have a lot of outs. And and yeah, I push him in for 20,000 here with an ace-4. And what does he do? He sits there. And he waits. Trying to make a decision. And he ends up folding it. Just fine by me. Like I said, aces are king. And whenever you have an ace in your hand like that... I just want to make sure that, you know, I make him make a decision like that. We got a king three, uh, not something I really want to play with. Um, and some of you guys might be saying, well, an ace four is no better than a king three. Well, if he hits none of his pairs and we both have kings and he has a higher kicker than I do, he's just going to take the pot home. So I want to make sure that if I am calling him, it's something with an ace in my hand or it's like a high um two pair where it's like a king queen or a queen jack or a jack ace or a king ace or a or a king jack or a jack 10 there's so many options uh we got a king two here um i just checked we just both keep checking here check 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 he ends up showing you an ace three and he ends up taking that pot home like i said aces are kings guys and he just made sure he he should have been forcing me all in there, but nonetheless, it is what it is. Again, I'm just checking. I it was a small call for me, and yet again, he wins it with a small pair of nines. Even though his third pair on the board was good enough to beat us, we then get a queen ten here suited on a big blind. I end up throwing out a bet for twenty thousand here, and he just ends up folding it right away. Next set of cards we get, though, is a 10 king, and yet again, I forced him to go all in. Like I said, two face cards is good enough for me to get, if I possibly would double them up, it would be kind of uh, not a bad beat in a sense, but it would be good for us to call with those two cards, so that's exactly what I did. We then get pocket twos, and he just, I throw out a bet for about 10,000 here, something fairly cheap, and he just ends up folding that as well. I end up keep, I keep checking the chip counter because I want to um I want to blind him out or I want to uh get him to go all in. So I keep dwindling down his stack here and we keep building up. So like right now I'm almost 5 to 1 chip stack on him. Or more 5 to 1 chip stack. I think we're what 6 to 1 at this point. 
almost six to one on for chip stack at this point. And this is the final nail in the coffin, guys. We have an ace four. I end up throwing out a bet for nine thousand. And he snaps. I see it. Uh, he goes all in. And of course, I'm going to call that with my philosophy. Aces are kings. And Jack, he shows a Jack King. Flop comes out two, five, six. Then another two. And then a six. And I say, good game. Good game. We, you played hard like it was a good game. And guys, this was my first ever MTT win. I can't. I, I was I was so excited in this moment. I was supposed to go to sleep at a certain time, but um, I ended up staying past the time I was supposed to get to bed at. Um, and I kept asking him, hey, do you want to get in a photo? Do you want to get in a photo? Do you want to get in a photo? Uh, he didn't have his microphone on, so I'd, he ended up just leaving. So we got to take the picture by himself. It would have been nice for him to come in it, but um, that's okay. Uh, so I did that. I picked up the trophy. And I did a little rock star symbol here. And we ended up getting the trophy for the first time for a $40.5 million win. There was 173 people in this multi-table tournament. And we were the best one out of all of them. And uh, guys, dude, I was so excited. I was so happy. And I'm glad I can share this with all of you guys. And I want to say thank you so much for being a supporter of the channel. If you guys haven't liked this video already... Make sure you guys go down below, like the video, leave a comment, and if you haven't joined the Discord, join that awesome community over there, and you'll get notified whenever I do upload a video or when there's some kind of event or live stream going on. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye now.